morning and welcome to our service here at Grace United. Welcome to those watching from home. And if we have any visitors, you are always welcome to join us here. The good news is there will be lemonade today downstairs in the grand room following the service and that way you'll get to meet a few people and have some fellowship together. The good news is that Val and Graham Double have celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary on Friday, 60 years married. Okay. <laughs> and we all wish them well and many more years of married life together. Please set aside Sunday, October the 20th, for the celebration of our 180th church anniversary. We will be having lunch together following the service across the road at the Riverside Exhibition Center. And there will be uh, former members here, hopefully some former ministers here, so come and renew some friendships of people you haven't seen in a long time. The church office will be closed this Friday through till August the 12th, but the phone will take messages. If there is important pastoral care, you can call Bev Layden. Her phone number is in the book, our church book. And Reverend Glenn will be back on Tuesday. So you can call him at his phone number in his office. <clears throat> we welcome back our friend, Phyllis Bannerman. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us today. As we welcome God into our midst, take a moment to prepare for worship and the lighting of the Christ candle. stand for the call to worship. All God's works give thanks to the Lord. The Lord is near to all who call upon God in truth. Let us worship God who is faithful in all things. Let us continue to worship as we sing all hail the power of Jesus' name.
please listen to the opening prayer. Gracious and generous God, we gather with grateful hearts, amazed by the abundance in your creation, abundance to share in food, in friendship, and in faithfulness. We gather with hopeful hearts, seeking another taste of your love for us. Your love is both mysterious and miraculous, O oh God, with the power to transform times that overwhelm us and lives that hunger for hope. By the power of your spirit, move among us in our worship. Open before us the new possibilities you create for us in Christ, the bread of life, bread for our journeys. And would you please join me in a prayer of confession? Gracious and generous God, we gather each week to be fed by your love, trusting that you will embrace us. We confess we are not nearly so generous with our love. We are often suspicious of others, fearful of what they seek from us. We criticize what others do, but rarely question our own motivations. Forgive us, O oh God, and awaken our generosity toward others. The letter to the Ephesians declares that Christ dwells in our hearts through faith, for we are being rooted and grounded in his love. The forgiveness he offers is a gift of this love, and that is wider and deeper than we can ever imagine. Receive God's forgiveness and be at peace with God, with yourself and with one another. We will now sing the children's hymn, which I know some of you know. You've, I think I sang it in Sunday school, so probably you've heard it before. I'm sure there are people wondering what they've built their homes on lately with all the rain that we've had, and some have certainly been luckier than others. I'd like to call on Audrey, please. Good morning. Uh, today's reading is taken from Ephesians 2, verses 1 to 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us,
God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms of Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. May God bless to our understanding this reading from Holy Scripture. Amen. This morning you're going to be watching a video by Tommy Woodward and Eddie James, and they are known as the Skit Guys, and they do a lot of uh, Christian videos about Christian things. Um, you will get the message. They are a little unorthodox, but you will get the message. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's workmanship, his masterpiece. I don't know about you, but when I get up in the morning and look in the mirror, I don't really see a, a masterpiece, you know? I mean, maybe a Picasso. It's like, <laughs> but I want to be his masterpiece. I want to be everything he created me to be. And so I go to him in prayer and I say, Dear Heavenly Father, do whatever it takes to mold me into the image of your son. Make me your masterpiece. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi. Whoa. Who are you? I'm God. You said the prayer, so here I am. You're not God. No, I am. You said the prayer. That's how it works. Okay, okay. If you're God, then uh, make it snow in here. You know what? I really don't want to make it snow in here because it'd get kind of yucky. Yeah, you're not God. Why do you say that? God wouldn't say yucky. I do. It's a Greek word. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, if you're God, what does Lamentations 15.9 say? Lamentations is only five chapters. It's a very short book. Oh, why was it so short? I was tired of lamenting. Oh, okay, okay. If you're God, who's going to win the World Series this year? I'm really not into playing games. Why are you so much into playing games? You are God. What gave it away? You answered my question with a question. I did? <sighs> yeah, I do that, don't I? I did it again. <laughs> Step right up. Here we go. Okay. All right. Hey, what are we doing? I'm going to make you my original masterpiece. This is the process. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Wait, wait. What are these about? These are the tools I'm going to use to make you into my original masterpiece. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. I thought you were a carpenter. That's my son. Step right up. Here we go. Okay. Oh, hey, God. Mm -hmm. How do you know what to chisel away and what to leave? I take out everything in your life that doesn't belong there, kind of like dead weight. Ooh, speaking of dead weight, could you chisel right here? It showed up when I was in my 20s and grew around and became back fat. I don't even know why you created that, but I can't get rid of it. I mean, I've tried everything. Like, I tried running. I tried lifting weights. My wife actually talked me into trying Pilates. That was awkward. But I can't get rid of it. So if you would just chisel around here, and then, you know what, if you chisel a line right here and maybe four to five, maybe eight lines right here, that would be awesome. You're funny. You made me that way. I also made the platypus. The platypus? All I'm saying is most of my children, when it comes to this process, they just want to talk, but they don't want to do the work. So do you want to talk or can I chisel? Talk, chisel. No, talk, no, chisel. no, 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 no. I choose to chisel. All right. Through my Holy Spirit, I'm going to bring up things in your life that I want you to work on. Like your anger. Mm. I created the emotion, but you use it in the wrong way. Um, you compare yourself to others instead of me. You tell little white lies because you want to people please. You're lazy. But you try to fool everybody by looking really, really busy. You have a problem with lust? Whoop. Time out. <laughs> I don't really have a problem with lust. You don't have a problem with lust. No, I can do it anytime I want. <sighs> Hang on a second. I mean, I, I got to admit, I, I feel like you've been doing some great work, and I'm looking pretty good right now. All right, when you look in the mirror, who do you see? 
I see me. Okay, then I need to keep chiseling away because ultimately you and other people need to see my son. Okay, don't misunderstand me. It's just um, when I look more like Jesus, people get uncomfortable around me. I mean, even my church friends, and they're like, oh, you're holier than thou, you know? And, and I, don't, I don't think I'm supposed to make people uncomfortable. So what you're saying is you'd rather play God in certain areas of your life than for me to be God over your whole life. That is not what I said. It's what you meant. Yes, it is. Um, it's hard to talk to you. You know everything that I'm thinking. I'm just saying you've done some great work. Maybe we take a break, a sabbatical from each other, you know. I'll stay right here, and then, you That's know. That's just it. You never just stay right there. You're either moving toward me or away from me, but never you just stay. What you're doing is called control. Do you want to control things in your life, or can I chisel? Control, chisel, control, no, chisel. No, chisel, chisel. All right. But can we chisel where I work? That's called control. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Now this right here, this secret sin that you keep running to whenever you're hurting, angry, lonely, tired, that you think you're fooling everybody, but it's making you a whitewashed tomb. Are you ready for me to chisel this out of your life? Yeah. You see, it's a process. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's your whole life. And you care so deeply about what other people think of you. It's rubbish. It's garbage. The greatest thing you're ever going to hear is at the end of your life, when you hear me say, well done, good and faithful servant, that's what you keep your eye on. That's the prize. Heavenward. <coughs> oh, that hurts. Oh. Trust me, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Right. <coughs> okay. I'm sorry. I just, I don't think you understand this pain. Pardon me? You're asking me to sacrifice a lot, God. Don't talk to me about sacrifice. I know all about sacrifice. I sent my son to die on the cross for pain, for sin, but I also did it for another reason, to give you freedom. Do you know what insanity is? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. And there are things that you've been doing for years, these empty wells that don't have anything to offer. You've been going to them, and it's insane. Allow me to chisel them out of your life. Allow me to produce character where you keep focusing so much on your image. Okay, but I was thinking. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Okay, but if we went another way. Your ways are not my ways. Oh, I can't. You can't what? I, I, I can't be good. That's your excuse. That's your excuse is that you can't be good. It's not an excuse. I can't. Oh, my child. In the beginning, I said it was good. I made you good. Be good. Yeah. But you and I both... What? Nothing. No, what is it? Nothing, okay? You wouldn't understand. I, God of all the universe, wouldn't understand something one of my children has to say. Try me. It's just, um, I let you down so many times, God. No, my child. You were never holding me up. I hold you up with my victorious, righteous right hand. Never the other way around. In this relationship, I hold you up. Chisel away. But just, just be prepared for what you're going to find in there. Because I know who's inside there. Because I get up every morning and I look at him in the mirror and I hate who I see. Because deep inside there, this, this, this little kid who gets up every morning and dresses like an adult. And I go out and I, and I try to do what I'm supposed to do, but I can't, okay? I can't be who everybody else expects me to be. God, I can't even be who I want to be, much less who you created me to be. And so inside is this scared, stupid little kid. But you chisel away. Just be prepared. You have listened to so many voices for far too long that were not for me. And you have totally bought into the lie, haven't you? You think you're junk, don't you? When you lay your head down at night after you've done the dance to get the hug, you think you're junk. Listen to me. I don't take time to make junk. How can I show you that my love for you stretches as far as the east to the west? That How can I show you that my love for you has no end? I know. Reach in your back pocket. What? Reach in your back pocket. Why? Are you arguing with me? Reach in your back pocket. Oh, God. Yes? I just meant 
God, I'll do that right now. You're just saying my name in vain. Come on. It's, it's a name. It's a saying. It's a name above all names. It's more than a saying. It's more than a name. I want to teach you something about my name. Reach in your back pocket. Oh, my gosh. You know what that is? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a note. I, I wrote it when I was in college. How did you get this? Hello? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and read it. I love Angie. Other side. Sorry. Dear God, did I hear you right today? Did I hear you say that you love me? Even though you and I both know I've messed up so many times. Did I hear you say you want to use me? And I feel so useless. If you'll take me and use me, then God, I give you all that I am. Take me. I love you, God. I love you too. And I love you too much just to leave you where you're at. This salvation that you hold, I don't want it to be some sentimental gush or some head knowledge. I want you to work it out in every detail of your life. And when problems come and chaos happens, don't look at it as a, as a prison, but look at it as a father disciplines his child. A father disciplines the ones he loves. I know, but it's going to be tough. Yes, but you bought into the lie thinking everything was going to be easy when you gave everything over to me. There will be trouble in this world, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I want you to do something. I want you to look out there and I want you to say, Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Tommy is God's... No, not the way you see yourself or you try so desperately for others to see you, but maybe for the first time in your life, the way I see you, the way I created you. Tommy... God's original masterpiece. Yes, you are. And so are you. God doesn't make junk. You are an original masterpiece. We're going to sing, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Okay.
be seated. And now we will pray for others. God of mercy, mystery, and miracle, you offer calm in our storms and challenge in our satisfaction. We give you thanks for all the ways we have tasted your abundance in friendship and fellowship, in food on our tables and protection on our streets. Amid these everyday satisfactions, keep us mindful of those who lack the necessities of life and who find each day unpredictable and anxious. Like Jesus' disciples caught on the rocky sea, we fear the storms of life. Throughout the world and in our own communities, we witness increased divisiveness and hatred toward those considered a threat. So many people face turmoil in war and upheaval. In the unrest around us, call out to us, come near to us, and overcome our fear. In so many countries and in our own neighborhoods, we witness great inequity and deep need for even the staples of life. In our communities, congregations, and families, we have uncertainty about the future and hope for leaders who are wise and trustworthy. In our lives and the lives of so many others, we witness depression and anger anxiety and despair. We pray that you will calm the turbulence within and around us. We hold before you in these moments of silence the people and places in need of your healing presence this day. In the face of what all may trouble us, we thank you for your steadfast love and faithful presence, the calm center we can claim in Jesus' name. And so we sing the words Jesus taught us. God of abundant love, we offer our gifts to you willingly, and yet they seem so small in a world of great need. Bless and multiply them in your love. Surprise us with your power, working in us and through us to accomplish worthy things in the name of Jesus Christ the bread of life. Amen. Our closing hymn is, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee.
Go now in peace, Christ with Christ as your friend and companion. So may the peace of Christ attend you day by day. The power of the Spirit give you the strength you need and the grace of God assure you that you will never walk alone. Amen. Thank you.